Hello, everyone, and welcome to Loop and Learn's open mic day for IAPS and your questions and our answers with Magnus Reint, uh, Teresa Hastings, and Tom Barrows, and possibly a few other experts. As we always do the disclaimer, and I want you to read along as we do this, IAPS and Loop are do-it-yourself closed loop algorithm uh, to help our automate insulin delivery. They are experimental and not approved by the FDA or other regulatory authorities. This presentation is provided to assist you in making your own decisions in consultation with your healthcare professionals regarding your own diabetes self-management. You take full responsibility for building and running the system and do so at your own risk. Uh, a little bit of housekeeping. Um, this is open mic, but um, when you're not speaking, please mute your mic so that any background noise um, doesn't enter in so that we get to hear what everyone asks. If you have questions that you'd rather put in the chat, uh, we'll be monitoring the chat. So I feel free to do that. I'm going to turn this over to Magnus Reins, and he will take it from here. Thank you, everyone, for joining today. Great. Okay. So um, last time, we um, tried to go through setting up IAPS from scratch. We went through most of the settings, and we recommended that uh, new users did not turn on the dynamic features. So uh, I was thinking, let's, I mean, you probably, you probably all enable them because, you know, we're not waiting. Uh, but still, I'm, I'm going to spend a, a couple of minutes just going through the dynamic features so that you all know how they are supposed to be used. So let's start with mm -hmm. the uh, dynamic insulin sensitivity factor. Now, the default is off, of course. Uh, and if you want... Uh, IAPS to dynamically change your ISF, you turn it on. And what it does is that it, it uses um, a lot of numbers, actually, to, to try to determine your actual sensitivity factor. It uses uh, your current PG, uh, the total daily dose, and the adjustment factor. There's a couple more things as well, but just we'll just try to, to keep it simple. Um, the the factors that limit what the dynamic ESF can do are the autosense min and the autosense max settings. So um, if you start by enabling uh, dynamic ISF, you'll see that it will um, it will uh, try to to determine your ISF on each loop cycle. So every time a loop cycle is is done, you can you can click the, or tap the little pill, and you will see what the calculated ISF is. And if you want it to be, let's say, more aggressive, you can work on the adjustment factor. And I'll come back to that later. Let's see. Yeah, um, dynamic CR is the same. It will look at your numbers and it will try to adjust your carb ratio uh, with every loop cycle to get it closer to what it actually is. Now, dynamic CR, uh, it works best if you actually enter carbs. Um, it will still work if you don't, but it definitely works best if you enter carbs. So the adjustment factor, let's spend a little bit of time on that one, because when you enable dynamic ISF for the first time, you'll see that it it does adjust your ISF, but it does so uh, quite quite lightly, and and that's because of the adjustment factor. Um, it's set by default to zero point five, which means fifty percent. It means that the adjustments that it thinks is right, it will cut in half before applying them. So this is this is a a, um, a setting that is meant to um, to make it uh, well less dangerous maybe um, and and at least to start with uh, you should you should stay with the 0.5 and then you could increase it but please do so in small increments like changing from 0.5 to 0.6 wait a couple of days uh, if nothing happens you could skip to 0.7. Uh, and then wait a couple of days and see what happens. Um, hey, many people, yeah. Magnus, can, can I cut in for a second? Sure. Um, 
I want to say kind of the idea behind the dynamic features. I don't know if people understand that, but the idea is that the higher our blood sugars are, the more resistant we are. And conversely, the lower our blood sugars, the more sensitive we are. So what these are meant to do is make it so that our settings are more aggressive, you know, the higher we are and vice versa. And the dynamic, or excuse me, the adjustment factor is like a slide that tells it how aggressive it, it can be. Um, that's kind of the idea behind these dynamic settings, if that wasn't clear. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Thanks. That's a good, that's a good point. Um, we we did talk a little bit about the dynamic settings last time, but I'm i uh, it's a good idea to to just clarify, and and you're absolutely correct. Um, the dynamic settings are there to try to help you with sensitivity when your 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 sensitivity settings are are not accurate. Um, okay, so adjustment factor, leave it at 0.5. Uh, wait a couple of days and see what happens. Many people end up increasing the adjustment factor because it works well during the day. And then during the night when there's, well, for most of us, not that much carbs, um, it might end up a little bit too aggressive. So while you are adjusting this and, and making the adjustment factor more aggressive, please make sure that you also wait and, and see that it works during the night before increasing it a lot. That's uh, talking from personal experience. All right. Now, um, let's talk a little bit about the SMBs as well. This was also discussed last time, but I'm seeing a lot of questions about this in uh, on Facebook. So the two images that you're seeing uh, right now actually mean the same. So enabling SMB always is the same as enabling everything except the one with the high temp targets. So just just to clarify that, um, I mean, there's there's some confusion to the user interface, and we've asked the developers to do something about this, and they will. Uh, but just know that um, the, the the settings to the left and the settings to the right actually mean the same thing. Um, is there, <clears throat> isn't the difference though that the one on the right, um, the one on the left will, like the one on the right, if you don't have any carbs on board, haven't eaten any carbs in the last six hours, and your blood sugar isn't above 110, I don't think SMBs will be enabled. The one to the left that says enable SMB always? No, the, the, it, the one to the right. Um, yeah. But so like it, is, if your blood sugar is under 110, you won't get SMBs in that situation, but the one on the left, I think you would. Um, according that's to that's my understanding as well. Yeah, yeah, I um, so I there's agree, a slight difference, but... and that's why, like, I use the one on the right. I don't do yeah. the always because I don't want overnight to get SMBs if my blood sugar is too high or I'm sorry, too yeah. low. Yeah, but there's been some discussion back and forth with the developers with with this one, and and apparently, um. Enabling SMB always does the same thing as the settings that are activated on the right. So uh, it's a little bit confusing. Um, personally, I go with the ones on the right. Um, but I just wanted to 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 let you know that there's work being done to make this easier to understand and to make the the settings make a little bit more sense. All right. So um, the SMV basal minutes. Um, this is another, you know, kind of setting that that it's is is overcomplicated in the way it's. I mean, the, the name is complicated, and and the explanation that pops up if you tap it is also a bit complicated. But the, this is basically just a limitation to how much insulin uh, can be given with every loop cycle. So with every loop cycle, as, as we discussed last time, uh, the algorithm does two things. It adjusts your basal and it gives or doesn't give an SMB. And, and there's, um, there's a limitation basically uh, with these SMB minutes that makes sure that it cannot deliver more than, uh, in this case, half of your hourly basal rate. 
in one single SMB. So this slide tries to explain um, the, the math of it. Uh, and I think it's a good idea to share this image on the Facebook page later, because this question keeps popping up again and again. Um, most people start out with the default 30 minutes. Most people increase it. Just to be clear, most people increase it. And uh, I'll come back to a, a typical um, scenario uh, where that is, necess is, is necessary uh, in a few minutes. Okay, so the SMB minutes for unannounced meals works the same way. Uh, they are separate so that you can choose uh, how much insulin insul or how much limitation or how little limitation you want to give IAPS with, uh, with uh, carbs announced or without carbs announced. Magnus, could I uh, ask if you go back to uh, even the the one about max SMB basal minutes? Uh, my right. understanding, I, I'm trying to look over your math here and, and not really grasping it. So, I mean, my understanding is if you have a basal rate of one unit per hour, mm -hmm. every five minutes, every loop cycle, uh, if you have... Uh, this setting max s and b basal minutes set to 60 60 minutes yeah being every one loop cycle you would be able to get an s and b of one unit am i uh, understanding it correctly mm -hmm. if your basal rate is one unit per hour yeah. the maximum that iips is allowed to give you on each loop cycle is one unit but yes. there are okay. a lot Great. more other limiting factors so this is this is a this is the absolute maximum this is the 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 major limitation but there are other limitations as as well just to be clear okay so it's yeah. not always going to give you one unit this is this is the um, a maximum limitation yep okay thanks all right one of the questions that we get a lot is uh is this one uh, in in one form or another, uh, I often go high after a meal, and IAPS doesn't give me large enough SMBs to get me back in range. What do I need to change? Which settings do I need to change? Um, the first thing I would do is to try to figure out if this is an issue of the amount of insulin or just a timing issue. Um, some people are resistant to insulin and need to get their bolus before they eat. Um, five minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes. That depends on, on I mean, it's, a, it's an individual thing. <clears throat> but just, just make sure that you don't, that you don't increase um, the SMBs if, if the issue is actually a timing issue. So um, the first thing I do is just make sure that it's not a timing issue. Uh, you can see that by uh, looking at your BG over time. If you if you wait an hour or two after after your meal, if 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 your BG is stabilized, then the issue is most probably that you didn't get enough insulin in time for the carb absorption. Um, but if you find yourself having to give more and more and more insulin, then sure, go ahead and do what you should do to um, to increase the SMBs. Um, the first thing I would do to increase SMBs is to increase the SMB and unannounced meal minutes settings. Increase them from 30 to 60 or from, well, what whatever works for you. Uh, start in the small uh, in increments and, and, uh, and go from there. Um, and in addition to that, you should look at the adjustment factor. And remember that the SMBs are calculated using your current basal rate. So if your basal rate is extremely low, you're going to have to set the SMB minutes really high in order to get enough, big enough SMBs. There are some people who have a low uh, basal rate, but still need a lot of insulin for meals. So just make sure that you remember that that um, your your basal rate is part of this calculation. Um, the whole 
um, high after meals thing. I mean, if we if we try to simplify it, it's it's always because you didn't get enough insulin, right? And it's usually because you didn't get enough insulin in time for the carbs. So look at that first, and then um, adjust the SMB minutes, increase the adjustment factor, and remember that the basal rate is a factor as well. The next common question is, what's the difference between a temporary target and a profile? And um, this one shows up uh, a couple of times a week as well. Um, a temporary target is, is, is a quite simple feature that just makes IAPS aim for a different, a different level. Um, a lower temp target will make it give you more insulin and a higher temp target will make it give you less insulin. It doesn't really do a lot uh, other than that, except for uh, setting a high temporary target in combination with the SMB setting that turns SMBs off when you have a temp target, a high temp, temp target. So this was referred to um, some time ago, which was referred to as exercise mode. And I think in the open APS documentation, it's still referred to as exercise mode, meaning that when you exercise, you set a high temp target and SMBs will be turned off. Now, for most people, this did, uh, well, it, it helped a little bit, but not enough. And that's why profiles were made. So the, the profile feature is quite new in IAPS. It's been around in Android APS for a while. So it's not a new way of, of, of working with, with the settings, but it's new to IAPS. And the, the profile basically lets you change most of your variables easily with a slider. And... Um, it, it, I mean, it changes your basal rate, it changes changes your ISF, and it changes your, your CR. And um, if you're a pro, you can also use the profiles to, to turn off SMBs. So most people have uh, greater success with exercise by making a profile uh, with a lower percentage and making that profile also turn off SMBs. Um, there's been some confusion uh, regarding targets because when you make a profile, you can also set um, a, a different target in that profile. And that target, the profile target, is not considered a temporary target. So that means that if you create a profile and you set a high target in that profile, that will not trigger the um, SMBs off with high tar high temp target setting. So just make sure that you don't uh, confuse the two of these. Um, I know that uh, Teresa and Tom and a couple of other people are working on making the documentation, the in-app documentation a bit better. So it will explain this in a better way. Um, but just make sure that you, you um, consider using one or the other and and uh, make sure that you understand um, that a profile target is not considered a temp target. Okay, third question that is quite common is, <laughs> why is the calculator suggesting so much or so little insulin? And um, when you use the calculator, it, it has a little information icon that you can tap to see the math. And for some people, that is useful. For others, it's basically just confusing. So, um, I mean, you, you should you should try to understand um, what's behind the information button. You should try to understand the math. But there are two key um, things to, to consider. One is that the calculator uses several factors to, to, to do its suggestion, not just your BG and the amount of carbs. It also looks at the prediction, the current prediction of where your BG is going to end up. So if the algorithm thinks that you're going to go low, it will not suggest a lot of insulin. It will actually tell you that it doesn't suggest a lot of insulin because you're predicted to go low. Um, 
and for most people, I mean, if you if you look at the prediction line and you know that it's wrong, then there's something off with your settings. Because the prediction is just pure math based on your 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 settings and the amount of carbs and the amount of insulin. So um, my recommendation, I mean, if you if you look at the calculator and and you think it's off, then you should you should really take some time to look into your settings and trust yourself before trusting the calculator. If you if you really think that it's it's off, then you should manually give yourself the bolus that you think you need and see what happens and then adjust your settings. All right. Now we are over to the part of this open mic that is actually open mic. So I'm gonna stop sharing for a bit and we will take any questions. So Magnus, there is a question from Dan in the chat. Do you want me to read it or should you yes, read please. it? Then? Okay, so uh, hang on to your hat here. It says, what's the difference between temporary targets, toggling the experimental switch and adjusting the percentage versus adjusting the percentage, setting an override profile target and shutting off SMBs via SMB off under more, all under profile? Did wow. you get all that? The good thing is it's in the chat <laughs> no. as well. So. I'm opening the chat uh, now. So what's the difference between temp targets toggling the experimental switch and adjusting the percentage. That's one, okay, that's one, uh, one way option, of doing yeah. it. Versus adjusting the percentage setting and override profile target and mm -hmm. shutting off SMBs with SMBs off. Ah, okay. Well, if you, if you set a temp target, a high temp target, and you have the setting uh, no SMBs with high temp targets on, then you will not be getting SMBs. And if you make a profile with a high profile target, and you uh, in that profile also say turn off SMBs, then you will not be getting SMBs. So in in both cases, you will not be getting SMBs. Is that uh, an an okay answer to your question? It, it, okay, it answers half the question. What does the percentage do on the temporary target and what does the percentage do then on the... Um, I mean, I, I, I kind of know. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, ask, I'm asking like I'm asking, you know, for, for a purpose. <laughs> yeah, good. Okay, so um, within the temp target uh, page, there's a button called experimental that you can, you can tap and then you get a slider, a little percentage slider. Um, I've asked Jan to take that away because no one understands it. And it makes no sense after we introduce the profiles. So that's that's the honest answer to your question. That feature within the temp target, the experimental feature within the temp target, that one should be taken away. It was an attempt to solve uh, um, a couple of, of requests, but those requests were solved in a better way when we introduced uh, the profiles. So it, it's hopefully hopefully going away soon, um, leaving leaving that kind of thing to to the profiles. Could I just interject, perhaps, that uh, in I APS and Open APS and Android APS, of course, SMBs are for those familiar with Loop uh, is auto bolus. Uh, it's not exactly the same thing, but it's sort of think of SMBs as something you want the app to give you because it's a lot quicker than just uh, racing basil and stuff like that, which was what Loop only was able to do before. Uh, then Loop got autobolus. So SMBs are considered something you want the app to give you because it's automatic and it's uh, the quickest way to get insulin. That's a good point. I mean, you you want SMBs. That, yeah. that is, um, at least in my opinion, that is the closest, I mean, th that resembles a, a working pancreas a lot better than than a basal rate. Your body will produce insulin when you need it, not by a, a daily rate. So that's that's the point of SMBs. It's trying to do what your body should be doing. Okay, but quick question. But it IABS also adjusts the basal rate up and down, right? And additionally, it does give the small molus molus. Yes. Versus in loop, we had well loop and and free ABS, we had this 
either you could go with adjusting only basal rate, then we could switch to have outer bolus and turn off or reduce basal rate. And then we had this great option in free APS, which was you could turn on this factor, which would go up to a certain amount of adjusting basal rate and then considering calculating a bolus, um, which was, which now I understand it's very close to IPS, where IPS is doing a lot of adjustment in the basal rate and giving still these additional small boluses, right? Yes, that's true. Okay. And I mean, if you look at, if you look at the way um, IAPS and Android APS uh, works, you'll see that if you, if you disable SMBs, either by turning it off or by having a high temp target or whatever, the algorithm will still try to fix your, your blood sugar if it's high uh, by increasing the basal rate. So, so the idea is that SMBs are a better way to mimic the human body than adjusting basal rates. But the answer is yes, it's doing both. And um, depending on your settings, it's doing both at the same time. Uh, and, and sometimes it gives you an SMB and turns off the basal rate. And that is expected behavior. It is expected that the basal is set temporarily to uh, low or zero after you do a bolus or get a, 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 an, an SMB that's uh, bigger than next to nothing. And that's also a very common question from uh, beginners or even experienced loopers that like, oh, I, I build this now and now it turned off my base rate. Why doesn't it give me more insulin, right? Yeah. And the, the answer I always try to give is that, well, if you raise the basal rate, that will actually take you an hour. If you need some extra insulin uh, by increasing the basal rate, basal is per hour. So it'll actually uh, distribute that that extra amount of insulin you need over the next hour. So you can sit there and wait for, especially if you're having low basal rates uh, and for kids and everything like that, where you have really, really low basal rates. And so you might even have to wait in half an hour for the first increase in the basal rate for something that could be given right away with a bolus. And yeah. that is, uh, so, yeah, it's a very common question. Like, why did it stop the bowl, uh, the basal? And that that's a feature. Because it's that's supposed a good to. Good thing. <laughs> yeah. Right away. Don't wait for an hour. So that yeah. is true. Uh, I have a lot of discussions, or had a lot of discussions with my my endo about this because uh, she was asking about my 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 <laughs> my daily basal rates compared to my my bolus, and you know it's completely off, which is a good thing. So after a couple of hours of discussion, I convinced her that this is this was a good thing, and and she's never asked me again. Um, but you are definitely right, Jonas. That's a it's a it's a very common question, and we yeah we should actually print T-shirts and give to Anders where you can say I have a basal fixation. And yeah, give that to the Anders. <laughs> that would be good. Uh, but I think to um, to new users who are are I mean if if you eat. You, you use the calculator, you eat, and your BG starts rising. Um, number one, never mind that the, the basal is turned off. That's a good thing. Uh, number two, if you are an experienced loop user, you are probably used to giving extra carbs. You, you don't need to do that in IAPS. You can hit the manual bolus button, give yourself whatever you want, and press enact bolus. If you know that you need a unit or a unit and a half or three or 0.25, you, you don't need to add carbs for that. You can press the bolus button, enter the amount you want, uh, tap on an act bolus, and that, that, that won't prevent the app from giving you more insulin in the future. I, I see this all the time from, from loop users that they're afraid of manually giving themselves a bolus because they think that the app will stop giving them more insulin, but that, that's not the case. So feel free to correct um, by giving yourself a bolus if you want to. If you find yourself doing that every day, all day, 
then your settings are off. No, thank you for explaining this one more time. And, <laughs> and I think I think we 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 did exactly that, jumping on this on Sunday, and I technically increased the basal rate. I know everyone will just call crazy me without how can you do that without testing? I just did. I just so we increased um probably about 10 to 15 percent almost overall. I looked at it that it's kind of like smooth. And what I saw right away, it, it, it really worked. It works great at night. We just had the experience that um, kid was somewhere else. I had to try this remote um, car. Coming back to one question um, regarding this calculation and carbs that you just mentioned. So when I, when I catch my kid eating something that um, she's kind of like, I figure out she just ate it let's say 30 minutes ago, would you still consider to, to place it in I, I, APS because it will still calculate and do a better job even in, in then later on in AutoSense and AutoTune? Or would you just say, well, it already started to give insulin, just don't bother. So which, which, what would you prefer? Would you say, yes, enter it, put the timestamp, let's say 30 minutes prior, and then it will correct and um, substitute the amount that is already given and do the better job? Or would you just say, oh, don't, don't bother? What, what is your ex experience or advice? Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, there's, I think there's, um, there's different opinions on that. Some people just don't bother and, and let the algorithm do its thing. Uh, I'd say that, I mean, if your kid runs off and eats half of a candy bar, uh, it's a good idea to uh, to do something to avoid a spike. I mean, the, the app will take the, the glucose down where it belongs, but if you if you help it a little bit, it, it will do so faster. So one way to solve that that um, issue is by entering some carbs back in time. And the next loop cycle will will take that into account and probably calculate a, a larger SMB. Uh, another way to solve it, if you don't want to do the carb counting thing, is to, again, enact a manual bolus. You could wait for the algorithm to do its thing through one or two or three or five loop cycles. Or if you know the amount that, that the kid needs, just enter the amount of insulin and press enact bolus. Now, there's a lot of things happening in the chat. Uh, <laughs> is any of this something I should look into? Illness. It's it's about it's about uh, removing CGM access and app for read write uh, health from sorry read write permissions from uh, loop so that it can stay on the phone. Yeah. Um, I, I do have a question regarding okay. uh, profiles and uh, hypos, if I may. Yeah. So I I do have a post hypo override that I will switch on if I'm dipping a bit low and if I treat with like five carbs maybe because IAPS actually does a really good job so that you only have to treat like just a little. So on loop, I had to treat with a bit more. Um, what I do realize is that often when sugar starts rising, I, my, my post hypo profile has SMBs off, right? So that I, I don't get SMB in that, in that situation. But when it starts rising, it, it goes above my usual target or like a, what I would call in loop, like the glucose safety threshold, basically. And then it, it comes up and my, uh, my hypo profile is set at 100, 110 milligram deciliters. And uh, it just starts with a temp basal of like 1.6 units for like 30 minutes, which kind of sometimes speaks the purpose of not getting insulin in that situation. <laughs> Usually I'm fine, but is there like any way I can, I don't know, like tweak the setting a bit so that I don't get that like 30 minute temp basal increase in there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, I mean, uh, I other than just rising the target even more. Yeah, yeah okay. I have the exact yeah. same issue, uh, ex especially at night. If I'm yeah exactly um, I, yeah exactly yeah. I, 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 after I'm, I come from home from the gym and I, I dip a bit low I usually you know two gummy bears and just the the, the post hypo override and then if I don't really check my phone sometimes I get that temp basal and it just dips me low again yeah, yeah. I had I had that uh, a couple of weeks ago the recurring lows at night uh, and and they were caused by that temporary basal right so uh, I wake up at I don't I don't do the MGDL numbers. So I wake up at 3.8, which is low for me. Um 
I know that I can fix that with with one uh, glucose tablet. So I eat that, but that creates a, a fast rise, right? So uh, the algorithm reacts by uh, increasing basal because I also have a profile that I set for lows so that it, it doesn't give me SMBs. And for me, what happens is probably the same as you. It, it, it sets a temporary basal that is so high that it, it gives me uh, another low. So what I've done is that I have reduced the maximum basal rate. There's a setting somewhere, I don't remember where, that, that defines how high IIPS can set a basal rate. And the idea, I mean, uh, my, my basal rate is uh, around one unit per hour on average. And I had my uh, maximum basal rate at 2.5. Um, I reduced that to 2.0, and that did the trick for me. And I was expecting it to give me an issue with doing other corrections, but what I've seen is that um, the algorithm has solved that by doing SMBs instead of changing basal rates. I think so, the setting, if I'm looking at it, it says current basal safety multiplier. It says, this means that OpenAPS will never be allowed to set a temporary basal rate that is more than four times the current hourly basal rate program, if it's set to four, of course. That's, so that sounds like what you've changed, right? Current basal safety multiplier. Uh, that's not the one I changed, actually. I went So, so there's, the, there's that, I, I and went then on the pump, pump settings, settings. Yeah, I went there's into max pump basal. settings. Yes. Oh, pump okay. settings, OK. So, yeah. so the thing but, is, uh, on, on the pump settings, I have four units as a max basal, but um, like the highest basal it seems to give me is like three, because so um, the, the multiplier that Jonas just mentioned, I have it at three, and yep. my highest basal is, oh Jesus, I think 0. 0.6. Yeah, 0. 0.6. So so the highest thing I see is 1.8. Yeah. So I'm, I'm at the... which is below four. So I, I guess I have to reduce the multiplier then. Well, uh, I think I think both would would help you out. I mean, uh, look look at what it's giving you, and and see which of these limitations uh, would would help you avoid that high basal rate. Yeah, and okay. also adjust your sensitivity in your profile, in your post hypo profile to like fifty percent. Yeah, it's it's at eighty right now. I, I, I would lower yeah. that. Yeah, because when we get low blood sugar our livers are more sensitive to soaking up glucose for some time afterwards, which makes us more yeah. sensitive to insulin. Yeah. So that's really what the problem is. It's not the amount yeah. of insulin you're getting. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. a combination of, of all the above, really, you know, this is kind of the yeah. trial and error of diabetes, unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of lucky in a way that I don't really get rebound loads and Magnus is, is getting rebound loads. I just, it's just, I'm sure you guys know it, right? It's like if, if I'm, I'm coasting at like 70 and then I'm dipping at like 69, 68, 70, and I'm like, yeah, I want to go to bed now. I'll just pop in like one glucose tab. I just want to be a bit more, like a bit higher. For you guys, I think it's like 4.1 or something, like just below four, right? I'm just dipping below yeah. four. Yeah. And then I, I just coast around that not really comfortable glucose range and, and I just want to avoid that, but yeah, okay. Yeah, Paul. but I think I think Tom. I mean, Tom has a point uh, because if you yeah. if you reduce yeah. uh, sensitivity uh, or if you if you if you on on your low profile, if you instead of setting it at eighty, you set it at fifty, it will help you out a lot more. That's probably easier than changing the the maximum basal weight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, thanks. So I I'm just want to make sure I'm clear on what you're saying. So you set a, a, um, a profile for when you've gone low? Yeah. The thing is, uh, we, we want to be able to uh, have a glucose tablet or two, with, uh, and, and we are expecting a, a, a spike, right? And we, we don't want IAPS to treat that spike aggressively. Especially with the, uh, since it's a UAM, right? You just pop a glucose yes. tablet, you get a sharp rise, and the UAM says, "Oh wow, here's a lot." You're eating. Of, here's a, here's a, <laughs> you're eating. I'm gonna kill that now, and it, it so it'll it'll give you rebound lows. You'll go up and down, up and down every time you try to treat it with glucose, sharp rise, lots of insulin, and you go down again. 
So that's why it's a sort of like, and it's the same thing with loop as well. Like you have, yeah, a, it's, it's the same I, thing with loop and, and the IOB backfill basically. Right, John, you, you, you probably had that, right? Loop cuts basically, you, you accumulate negative IOB and then you eat something. And then as, as soon as you pop up in your range again, it just gives you everything. Yeah, but it's there, basically where there's like a, the there's negative, a big negative difference. IOB fetch can be. Yeah, it, it, it's a difference, because, but it's. it's yeah, I, I mean, the, um, the symptoms are the same. But I just yeah, want to point out yeah. that that um, yeah. IAPS or any APS based system will not give you all of that accumulated negative IOB. Exactly. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. You, you're right. But 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 the thing is that helps a lot of loopers. I'm trying to say is they set a profile which is like an override in loop. They set a profile with a higher target and maybe uh, like lower sensitivity, or something like that. Yeah. Right. For 45 minutes or 60 minutes, and that is basically the same thing we're trying to do here with uh, with IAPS. Yeah. The, the great thing with IAPS, though, is it'll only give you insulin if it really thinks you need insulin. It will not give you insulin based on, I don't know, negative IOB or you ended 100,000 carbs. It, it's not going to do that. That's that's the yeah. great yeah. thing about IAPS. Yeah. But, but that uh, sharp Joanne, rise what... will give you, will give you yeah. a lot of insulin anyways. Yeah. But, but, but why Joanne, would you, what, 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 would what you also increase the target? Oh, sorry. Why would you shut that off if you know it's going to spike because you've taken glucose? Because it's not a real spike, right? If, if if you're dipping, if you're at 65 and I eat 10 grams of, of carbs, I'll, I'll have I'll have a sharp rise, and then it'll it'll you know it'll ease out. But we don't want to have that insulin increase on that sharp rise. Yeah. So I, I set like a, a small profile, minus 60 minutes. I don't know what you do, Magnus. And, um Yeah, right. And then it just evens out, and you avoid that insulin spike with the glucose spike basically yeah so basically you're telling iaps to back off for 40 minutes not completely back off but back off a bit because i i ate some candy i'm gonna spike but i know that it's gonna level out so don't give me too much insulin wow okay and it's, so, yeah and since it's glucose it'll it'll be gone in an hour or something like that yeah. so that's why it's like 45 60 minutes setting it to uh I guess twice your your normal rate would be a, a way to say it. Um, uh, Ellen, you had a question, I think. Yeah, in your profile, do you also put your target glucose higher, or do you not do that if you're just adjusting the sensitivity level? Uh, I do set it a bit higher. You do, okay. Yeah. So how much higher than your usual? Although you're in a different system, so. Yeah, well, um, the, um, I I set it to to seven, which is more than my usual five. Okay. Times, okay. Times seven 18, is one twenty six. So uh, one twenty six and five is um, sorry ninety. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That's why I sort of say okay. some, somewhere around double your minimum rate or something like that would probably work. So if you have four as minimum, you set it to eight. If you have a hundred, set for two hundred for uh, an hour or so. Okay. So in this um, low profile, you've set your target higher. You've changed your ISF to 50%. And is there anything else that you've done in it? Yeah. What, what I've done yeah. in the profile is that I just do the profile slider down to 50%. That changes everything, right? Yeah. So and it's so not you're, 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 you leave yeah. change CR yeah. on? Okay. So yeah. it changes I, ISF and CR. Okay. Yeah. I, I use a slider to 50%. I set a profile target of, in my case, seven, and I turn off SMBs. And then I make sure that this profile will last for 40 minutes. And um, in the Android APS world, there's an automation for this that where you can actually tell the app to automatically set that profile if you dip below some BG level. So uh, my next input to, to the developers is going to be, please, please let us automate this because then we don't have to, to, to pick up the phone and, and set that temporary profile at night when we when we're trying to sleep that's coming okay. eventually don't worry <laughs> yeah sleep <laughs> is precious magnus is that the slider that you were saying was going to go away no 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 okay the, the slider that is hopefully going away is the one under experimental in the temp targets section okay the, so the magnus, slider a... in oh, profiles sorry. is going to stay forever there's a question about the rate between basal and bolus in the chat. Is it 
okay to have like do you need the 50 50 split or not? i think that's referring to what we talked about earlier yeah. and yeah what i always say is that don't worry about the the basal you don't have to be fixated on the basal even though the your endo is probably fixated on that so uh it, that's yeah. i mean it's the same thing it's the same insulin whatever it's the label is as soon as as long as you get the the insulin that's fine it doesn't really matter how it's delivered yeah but i mean yeah. a lot of endos are still asking this question and i i think i i i've seen uh, a document in the in the norwegian loopers uh facebook page that explains in detail why they should stop asking this question. So I'm, I'm going to try to find it and translate it and put it on the IAPS page because it's it's a good explanation. Um, currently, my basal is 16%. The rest is bolus. Yeah, and I'm 98% in range. Mine is 84. And, but in the last um, uh, open mic, you had said um, that if the basal is too high, then there might be some settings that need to be adjusted. I know I don't go with the 50-50, but uh, I was just wondering, are my settings off? I'm in 98% range. That I know. Good. Good. <laughs> but it's with okay. a bolus uh, percentage of 84 and 16 is basal. That's just what I was concerned yeah. about. Okay. Well, this is, I mean, this depends a lot on 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 your body's ability to handle insulin and carbs and what you eat and how much you exercise or don't exercise. So I, th I think th there's no there's no good answer to this. I mean, some some people like me are are have a very varying insulin need. So so for me, it's it's I mean, what I said, 80, 80 something percent of my insulin is delivered through SMBs. And and for me that works great, um, but there's nothing wrong with having a fifty fifty split yeah. at all. It's just the label. It's all the same insulin. Yes, you know. So, endos are definitely out of date when it comes to stuff like this. We should uh, come up with some documentation for them to educate them, <laughs> or shame them with a t-shirt. <laughs> or that, yeah. <laughs> There's another question in the chat from Ellen. Should max SMB basal minutes match max SMB basal minutes? Yeah, I'm guessing that's SMB. Oh, and, oh UAM, and I'm, I'm sorry. I'm I'm typo, UAMs. <laughs> oh, should they be different? Yeah. yeah. They can be different. That is an excellent question. Should they be the same or should they be different? Um, <laughs> I remember we had this question last time and Teresa and I have the uh opposite settings um she has her um uam minutes higher than her smb minutes because she doesn't announce anything ever and she wants to give the unannounced meals the ability to give a lot of insulin now, for me, it's kind of the other way around. I, I do some announcing or at least some pre-bolusing. So I want the uh, the unannounced meal um, to be a little more limited. So I have my settings at, I think my SMBs are at 120 minutes and my UAM are at 100. So there's a 20% difference. But that, again, that has to do with, with how you are um, dealing with... Uh, uh, pre-bolus and announcing or not announcing. Yeah, so the max in those settings is a, a, a ceiling. It's a, it's a way to sort of cap things to make, like, don't let this setting be more aggressive than this. Then, of exactly. course, it exactly. being basal minutes and whatever is kind of yes. complicated. Perhaps yes. it should be more or less aggressive. But no, but it's, uh, yeah, the higher the value, the more aggressive they are, both of them. That's correct. And, and again, I mean, when... Uh, for each loop cycle, the algorithm goes through a whole lot of numbers and it ends up with the amount of insulin that it thinks you actually need. And then these these SMB minutes and the uh, UAM minutes, they are limitations to that, right? So this is a limiting setting. Yeah, something we didn't mention in the slideshow, I don't think was the, um, let me double check what it's called. You have the SMB minutes. But then there's the um, delivery ratio. 
Yeah. Which limits the SMBs. I don't think people realize what that is because I think it's set to 0.5 by default. Mm -hmm. So whatever it thinks your SMB should be, it's cutting it in half. Because a lot of people would do the math with their basal rates and say, oh, you know, I should be getting uh, an SMB of 0.5, but for some reason, the system keeps giving me 0.25. And it's because of those other limiter settings that are in the app. Yep, that is true. Um, but uh, we've seen many examples of people increasing that setting and and uh, having uh, too much insulin delivered. Yeah. So that that's not the first setting I'd, I'd look into. I mean, sure. the, the whole APS world is about uh, safety guardrails, right? So the, the algorithm knows what you should be getting. And, and then there's a lot of safety guardrails to, to you know, avoid overdosing. Um, and I think the, the ones that we've gone through in these uh, last three sessions are, they're the ones everyone should start with. And then, I mean, if, 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 if you still don't get aggressive enough treatment, then we could definitely look into um, the more advanced settings. You suggest people use auto-tune off the bat. Uh, I last time I said that if you are using the dynamic features, then auto tune is not going to work very well. But and, and, and that has been an issue. <laughs> that has been an issue. Uh, but uh, the other day, uh, Yon released version two point two point four, I think, yeah. uh, where there's an option to when when you enable auto tune, there's an option to only use auto tune to tune your basal rates. And that basically fixes the issue of auto-tune not working well in conjunction with, with dynamic uh, settings. So um, thank you. Uh, thank you, Tom. I'm going to retract my statement on not <laughs> auto-tune with dynamic setting. Uh, and, and I'll say, go ahead, but make sure to, to enable that new features that says, says only, only use auto-tune for, for basal rates. What autotune does is that it adjusts your basal rates. It sets the it, it adjusts your profile basal rates. Exactly. Yeah. And and it, it it it'll give you an an overview actually of of what it thinks that your your profile basal rates should be. Does it actually enact them or it recommends what you should do? It changes it changes your profile basal rates. I mean, IAPS will still do this the thing it does every loop cycle and 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 change it up and down and give you SMBs and so on, but but this autotune feature looks at the bigger picture. It looks at your profile basal rate and it recommends changing it hour by hour. Yeah, and to be clear, you can run autotune one at a time to see what it would suggest without enabling it which allows it to change your settings. So if you're just kind of curious what it would suggest, you can kind of just run it and see what it would do. But that's not the same as enabling it. Yeah, you turn so, off the use auto tune and then you click the run now and you'll actually see the suggestions, but they won't be enacted unless you enable use auto tune at the top of the. So I think, I think yeah. we're gonna um, throw this out for one more question and we've, we've We've grilled our experts. Um, if anyone has a burning question, um, please go ahead and ask. Otherwise, we'll go on about our days or evenings. Ooh, I do hard. have one question. I was trying to run 2.2.2-1 on my phone uh, yesterday, and uh, there's some problem with it because I could not get to my onboarding screen for the pump. So I want to build the latest and... Uh, put it on my uh, phone. What do you recommend? Because I've been seeing some uh, discussion about main and dev. Do you recommend we go on dev right now? No, go on main okay. and, and go on the latest main. And there's a reason we don't announce the new versions on the Facebook page for a couple of days after each release, because we want, we, we want to make sure that some people have actually tried them out. So uh, we are fairly confident that 2.2.4 main is now safe, and, and we're going to post a link to that uh, in a couple of hours. Um, but in your situation, go ahead and build uh, the latest main. That's, uh, that's what you should use. Okay, thank you.
Yeah, and let me put that out there. If you're not a developer or actively following and pre being prepared to actually stop your app and whatever, if something seems weird, always use main. Yeah. If you're not a dev, don't use dev. That's the... Okay. So this is one last question. I know we need to end it, but this is an important. Um, is Autotune Web the same in IP IAPS? So I think we're comparing the Autotune that's an IAPS to Autotune Web. You finally got me. I don't know. It's it should be, but I, every <laughs> time I run it in both, I get different numbers. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I think that's just because the data set is pulling differently because on on your phone it's just pulling from all the data that's on your phone as opposed to the web which is pulling from night scout so i think it's just kind of yeah it's pulling from two different data sets but if, for what it's worth the what is recommended to me in the app has been pretty accurate more so than the web actually so yeah it's like for night scout if you go in and look at your um your basal rates it'll be slightly different than what you see in apple health um, apple health is much more accurate so if you're using Autotune based off of your Night Scout and the basal isn't quite in there accurately because Night Scout doesn't calculate it quite right, um, that's, I think, where the discrepancy comes from. All righty, everybody. Um, this will be edited and posted um, certainly by tomorrow morning, if not this afternoon. Oh, my gosh. Magnus, Tom, Teresa. Uh, Jonas, um, Mike, and uh, who else? Um, Dan, thank you for great questions. Everyone else, thank you for throwing in your questions. Thanks for learning. Um, this is important. On the video, there will be links um, included at the end of the video as well of a way if you want to contribute to the community, you can donate to Night Scout Foundation. Um, we've had a tremendous amount of support from you guys teaching us about IAPS. I just want to thank you. I think the community is very fortunate to have your input. I hope you all have a great whatever the rest of your day or evening is, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you.